so that with these memories intact, sometime in the future, a stimuli, it might be a car backfiring, it might be a smell, it might be seeing the Vietnam War on TV, triggers this memory, this very powerful memory, that again is unconscious, you don't think about it, it just happens. And that memory sets off your amygdala. So all of a sudden, you're back at the races. Your, your body is responding as if you were in that traumatic situation. Um, and in fact, in, in, a, in war, that's helpful because if you begin to sense or have a feeling that you're gonna be attacked again, immediately your body goes on alert and you're ready. But if it happens in your living room or at, at night with your wife, it's not a good thing. And again, the hormones and so forth that are produced, um, the hippocampus, which also becomes very critical in remembering events and can be injured if this kind of stress occurs again and again. But in general, what it does is it, it contacts the adrenal gland. That sends out adrenaline, which kicks in the whole sympathetic fight or flight response. Um, but then, um, at a certain point, for most people, the cortisol is sent out by the same process, and it inhibits the central nervous system. Okay. What we found in PTS patients, both right after the trauma and then later, is that they have less of this chemical. It's like the train gets started, but they can't find the brakes. <coughs> Quickly, in terms of the course of PTSD, really the symptoms that the soldiers experience right after the trauma is, are normal. But if they continue over a long period of time, if the, if the brakes can't be put on, that's when it becomes difficult. And there seems to be a number of different stages. There's the acute stage where the feelings come rushing back. Then there's a chronic stage, and we find that about 40% of individuals with PTSD end up in this chronic stage where it lasts for a long period of time. Very often, the individual will develop some kind of defenses, may even be alcohol or drugs to help them deal with the feelings. One of the things I'm concerned about is that when this occurs, those defenses can break very quickly. And the individual can end up decompensating and having all the feelings flood, flood them. And at that point, the individual with PTSD needs to see, have help immediately. And most of our um, mental health facilities are set up so that you, we can see people in two or three weeks. They need to be seen that day to get help. And so as a community, and one of the things I'll ask, we'll talk about a little bit, is I want to ask the mental health individuals here to help us begin to brainstorm. How as a community can we set up systems, maybe volunteers, to help these individuals until they can get to the VA, until they can get to the long-term treatment and help they need? Duration, um, we find that generally PTSD lasts for about three years. If you get good treatment, it can last five years or more without treatment. It can re you know, reoccur. And what we find too is if you go for six years with these symptoms without treatment, there's no, almost no chance that they will remit by themselves. Your only chance really is to get help. All right, so real quickly, um, Summary, remember the three categories of symptoms, raw, the re-experiencing, the avoidance, and the hyperarousal, the real physical changes, and then the last thing is remember this stimuli, memory, amygdala connection, because I want to talk about it as we get into the, the psychotherapy aspects of it.